planer is a machine tool used for cutting flat surfaces. The cutting is done as the work mounted on a traveling table is moved against a cutting tool. The tool is fed over for the next cut on each return stroke. In this way, rough castings, for example, are machined to specified dimensions. In beginning a job on the planer, study the blueprint carefully. Here, the blueprint specifies the piece to be made, a bench plate, the material to be used, cast iron. The finished dimensions called for, one inch, and the tolerances allowed, plus or minus five thousandths of an inch. Measurement shows the present thickness to be approximately one and one quarter inches. Therefore, about one-eighth inch must be removed from each side. A brush and scraper are used to clean the table and tea slots. The table must be clear of all chips and grit to avoid scratches and ensure accuracy. The tea slots must also be scraped clean. Wiping the exposed V-ways removes dust and grit which would cause friction and wear. Once the V-ways are clean, adding fresh oil ensures good lubrication. Also, make sure the wells in the V-ways are filled with oil. After lubricating the V-ways, Check the various oil holes for the bearing surfaces, as here on the cross rail, and cutting head. With the cleaning and oiling completed, the next step is the mounting of the workpiece. Place the plate on the table carefully to avoid finger injury. Now the stops, pins, and shims are placed on the table, ready for the setup. Stops hold the work firmly against the cutting pressure. A rough casting like this may not lie flat on the table. To level the work, and prevent wobbling, shims are inserted at the corners. After making these adjustments, it is good practice to use a surface gauge to make sure the work is level. Now slide two poppets into position along the T-slots on each side of the work.
the poppets and pins inserted at an angle hold the workpiece firmly in position while leaving the top surface clear. The set screws in the poppets or side stops are first tightened by hand to make sure the pressure will apply evenly. Finally, a wrench is used and the work is firmly locked in place. Always check to make sure the setup is rigid. The cutting tool is now inserted in the tool holder. For the first cut, a roughing tool is used. Notice that the tool is in a vertical position. Always clamp the tool firmly in the holder. Check the clearance between the highest side stop and the cross rail. For safety, allow at least one inch clearance. Also, make sure the tool will clear the work. Now, adjust the dogs which control the table travel. These govern both the position and length of the table stroke. After making a rough setting, start the motor for a test run. Engage the shift lever to set the table in motion. At the present setting, there is too much clearance at the front of the work. To correct the travel, stop the table and adjust the dogs. Moving the left-hand dog to the right shortens the travel to the right. Here, the right-hand dog is also adjusted to allow more clearance on the return stroke. A second test shows the travel is now correct. The cutting head clamp is now loosened and the cutting head lowered until the tool just touches the surface of the work. Loosen the micrometer collar set screw, turn the collar to zero, and tighten the set screw firmly. Crank the horizontal feed screw on the cross rail until the cutting tool just clears the side of the work. Now, lower the cutting head until the micrometer collar registers the depth of the required cut, here 100 thousandths. Lock the head to hold the tool at the cutting depth. Now clear the planer of all tools. Throw the shift lever to put the table in motion and engage the horizontal feed. The present rate of feed is satisfactory and no adjustment is needed. The tool is at the proper depth for the first cut of one hundred thousandths or one tenth of an inch. The reversing dogs are set for the correct table travel.
the action continues until the roughing cut is completed. The table is now brought to a stop and the motor is switched off. To prepare for the next cut, loosen the pins and remove the plate. When the working area has been cleared, turn the workpiece over, making both rough cuts first overcomes the effect of warping. In clamping the piece in position, again be sure it is firm against the stops. Now adjust the setting of the cutting head for the second roughing cut. Since the original reading was one hundred thousandths, the tool must be lowered an additional one hundred thousandths, making the reading for the second roughing cut two hundred thousandths. Always be sure the head is clamped tight before a cut is started. Now move the head over with a hand crank to bring the tool into position at the side of the work. Again, clear the planer of all tools before starting the cut. The cutting now continues at the new setting until the second rough cut is completed. The roughing tool is now removed from the tool holder. The finishing tool is inserted. With the tool clamped firmly in the holder, the head is moved over until the tool is above the work. Now lower the finishing tool until it just touches the work surface. Again set the micrometer collar at zero. Move the tool to the side of the workpiece. For the first finish cut, the head is lowered until the micrometer collar reads ten thousandths of an inch. For the finish cuts, a faster feed is used. 
moving the slide block on the eccentric further from the center increases the amount of feed. The finishing tool has a scraping action which produces a smooth finish. Notice that the cut is lighter and the amount of feed greater. When the cut is completed, the table is stopped and the working area cleared of chips. The workpiece is again turned over and mounted for the final finish cut. To determine the final cut, take a micrometer reading of the present dimension. In this case, the reading is one inch and fifteen thousandths. A cut of fifteen thousandths will bring the work to the required one inch. Since the present reading is ten thousandths of an inch and fifteen thousandths more must be removed, the collar is set at twenty-five thousandths of an inch. The setup is now complete for the second finish cut. Since this is the final cut, a check for accuracy is required. A micrometer depth gauge shows the finished thickness to be one and one thousand inches. This is well within the tolerances and the cutting proceeds. With the completion of the final finish cut, Loosen the pens and remove the work. Check the completed workpiece with the drawing dimensions. A micrometer shows the dimensions of the finished piece to be one and one thousand inches. The plate has been completed according to specification. In jobs on the planer, the skilled workman always begins by studying the blueprint carefully. Thoroughly cleans and lubricates the machine, makes sure that the work is mounted firmly and accurately, Adjust the table travel so that the tool just clears the work at each end. Carefully determines the setting of the tool for each cut. Make sure that the tool is fed on the return stroke and at the correct speed for the type of cut. 
and measures the work for accuracy as the job proceeds. Finished pieces, accurately machined, reveal the ability of the skilled workman. <laughs>